All righty, Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, my uh, uh, DM Murdoch Bible Theory versus Joseph Smith Theory is uh, almost finished here. It's at the final uh, seconds. Uh, and uh, I was checking out uh, pictures to use to make the, uh, the uh, thumbnail for this video and uh, saw the uh, weekly cartoons and uh, one of them had uh, Bernie Sanders cartoon uh, and a uh, citizen uh, asking him uh, how are you gonna pay for all this free stuff you know, that, that's what you commonly hear when people talk about free health care free education free this free that and uh, is how do you pay for it <laughs> And it, it's it's like, like Bible bashing between two different religions. Uh, obviously, they interpret the Bible differently. And likewise, in economics, different economic systems think about financing differently. And so for socialism, it's not about money. You don't need money in the socialist system. And uh, those who are thinking more capitalistic, uh, even though we in America are not capitalist, it's one of those traps, you know, where they say that we're a democracy. No, we're not. <laughs> or, or they push, we need to be a democracy. No, we're not. We don't want that. We really don't want that. But uh, trying to get it through to people that definitions in their origin are different than how we've morphed them to sneak in our agendas. Uh, and that's where the danger comes in. All right, it's done. And published. You're going to love the thumbnail. <laughs> and it's it's basically a uh, a regular journal entry video, uh, but uh, I do talk about the subject matter. It's in there, and it's near the beginning. <laughs> I stray uh, after a while, uh, and so at least MD will uh, appreciate it as she's working. All right, so I thought it would be a good idea uh, to uh, go over my economic theory for you guys. I know you don't want to know what I'm interested in or how I'm going to save the world. We don't care. <laughs> I see people are uh, slowly... Uh, viewing my web or commenting uh, today so it's picking up since this morning okay save to Pinterest <laughs> I really like the new technologies we have today oh it disappeared without me clicking on it that's weird I'm able to do so much fun stuff if I only had exactly what I wanted to do or at least knew how to do it with what I got if what I got can do it <laughs> See, I don't know too much about the technology uh, but this ties in to my economic my economic uh, proposal uh, so yes uh, Democrats are all preparing for the 2020 elections to take down Trump it's like uh, yeah you were originally talking about the 25th amendment that obviously didn't work did it and then you talked about oh well we'll just we'll uh, uh, impeach Trump and that didn't work did it and then oh well we'll get him in the midterms and that didn't work did it and all oh, will protest. That didn't work, did it? 
And so now everybody's going, oh, the Mueller report. And that's not going to do it. And then now everybody is saying, oh, the 2020 elections, that'll do it. No, that's not going to do it. <sighs> Nobody listens to me. I should never have had the situation in the first place. And that's the problem we have with our economy. We have allowed it to exist. And so when people talk about how do we fix things, they only think about keeping the system in place. And you can't just, you know, change this and that and say, oh, it's all better now. No, you got to redo the whole system of economy. That's the only thing we can do. You can't just go out and say, we need free health care. That's not going to solve the problem because you're still keeping the system in place. And the hospitals need money and the pharmaceutical companies need money and the insurance companies need money. You're not dealing with all the factors. And uh, if you just say, oh, okay, well, we're now going to subsidize uh, through government funding, uh, free health care for everybody. Yes, you have to figure out how to pay for it if you're going to keep the system of economy. That's why Republicans throw it in Democrats' faces. How are you going to pay for it? And what Democrats are saying is we're going to spend less on military and more on health care. That's what they're really talking about. And so Republicans are saying, no, we want more on military, less on health care. <laughs> we want security. <laughs> so, uh, Republicans don't need to ask how they're going to pay for it. We already know how they're going to pay for it. They're going to readjust the budget. It's that simple. And so... It just blows my mind how everybody argues over, how are we going to pay for it? Oh, we're so deep in debt. Trump gets us deep in debt. And he's not paying for it. He's making us pay. So, yes, if we want to fix everything, you can't just change everything and then readjust it in the budget because it ain't going to work. You have to devise a new economy something different because history's economies of all different types have proven to be unsuccessful and so yes I am NOT promoting communism but I am promoting obtaining whatever people need and want at no cost to them because there's no money in the system that I've devised. And you may think, but how do you pay for it? You don't. There's no money involved. You don't print money. You don't need it. How do we get what we get in the first place? Because of the Earth's resources. That's how we get it. The machines to harvest the food, to plant the food, to process the food, to ship the food. It's all Earth's resources. It's that simple. It's already here. We don't need to pay for it. <laughs> the Earth gives it to us for free. And the question is, how do we utilize it and not kill us off as biological entities? Because as you are aware, uh, though Republicans are in denial, when you cut down the forests, they don't put out oxygen. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> you need trees to put oxygen into the air. But trees need carbon dioxide in order to do the photosynthesis thing and put, it, put out oxygen into the air a balance ah. <laughs> and so yes all this fear about carbon dioxide I had a huge increase 
You know, everybody's freaking out. We're all gonna die! Yeah, because there are no plants to take the carbon dioxide from us. That's not the problem. The problem is the methane. And nobody's talking about the methane problem anymore. There was a, a slight surge in trying to talk about it, and it died off, and carbon dioxide filled the gap. And what they're not telling you is that the reason why there's a huge spike in carbon dioxide than ever in our history is because we're cutting down the forests. You know, Brazil is the perfect example. Uh, they're just slaughtering those trees to make way for development. And uh, they're not replenishing the trees. Uh, but uh, other places are getting polluted. But that doesn't cause the CO2 increase. That's a different gas that's emitted in the air. It's called pollution. And Utah, they cover it up by saying, oh, the inversion is strong today. It's a red air day because of the inversion. <laughs> it's like they want to pass responsibility off onto Mother Nature. <laughs> no, Mother Nature did not cause the inversion. It's pollution. <sighs> you know, if we had no pollution, this inversion would be meaningless. It would be like, eh, so what? But because we have pollution, the inversion causes the problem with the pollutants that cause sicknesses and diseases and illnesses and all sorts of problems health-wise. And thus the need for health care. And when poor people suffer, they can't afford health care. And so, yeah, you're starting to see that there's a big factor that goes into all this. You can't just say free health care for everybody when you're still polluting everybody. Because more and more people living means a greater and greater demand for health care. And thus more and more from the budget for health care. So that you can't spend as much on protecting the nation from the enemies who want to destroy us. Because we went and attacked them first. And so, okay. My system. No money. We already have the resources. So what do we need? We need food. We need clothing. We need shelter, communication, transportation, etc., etc., etc. And I have a hierarchy of needs that's uh, more uh, inclusive. Uh, others who have come up with hierarchy of needs, uh, like for example, uh, the first person who came up with it only used food, clothing, shelter. And there, others have come by and said, no, there's other things uh, that we need as humans also. And so I have a list myself and, uh, yeah, communication, transportation, education are all part of those needs that we have as humans. And so, uh, how do we do it? Simple. We need food. So how do we get food? Well, we've got to plant seeds and harvest them on land. Now, do we need to fill up all the land in a flat surface? Would that be a wise, effective use of the land and the resources? No, it would not. Do we need all that? No. Uh, the USDA puts out their reporting every year of how much waste, food waste, uh, the United States has every year. And uh, it's about 30% food waste. Now this is the food that grocery stores cannot sell. And so when you go to your grocery store and you watch the, the workers pulling food off the shelves and replacing it with new product, that's the waste. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, 
you may think, oh, well, we'll just give that to the poor. Seriously, you want to give poor quality products to the poor. That's your idea, and you think that's a great idea? No, that's a horrible idea. I mean, yeah, you can probably fool the government into giving you tax breaks for your business, and everybody will look at you, oh, you're being a humanitarian, giving poor quality food and services to the poor. You're treating poor as second-class citizens when you do that. Subhuman. Uh, everybody needs to be treated equally, remember? Everybody has the right to life, liberty, property. You cannot discriminate, you cannot deny, you cannot deprive, you cannot abridge the laws to keep people from life, liberty, property. And yet that's what's going on. And so in this system, everybody needs food. And so how do you get that? Well, you need labor. But do we need labor? Because we've sort of invented mechanics and uh, robotics and other uh, technologies that can do the work of humans and do it faster and better and cleaner. <laughs> and uh, we can, we have greenhouse technologies. Uh, I've even seen uh, a person who has a, uh, a little greenhouse place and the food is put in, they have PVC pipes going up and down. And there's pockets in the PVC pipes with dirt that's able to plant a particular food. And that was a great concept, but you can do it on a mass production scale as well. You don't have to go horizontal, you can go vertical. Because remember, the sun goes from east to west. All you need is sunlight, and all you can just go straight up. And you can go back a little ways too, at levels. And, uh, and you'll have shadows that get caused, so you'll have to make the next ones further on down. But again, we already have 30% waste in food. So we can be a little more smarter on how much food we produce based on the population. And there is no population crisis. That is an alarmist lie. We do not need to kill people in order to save the planet. We just need to plant more trees, and plant them in an immediate hurry to counteract the CO2 emissions, which will then reproduce, ah, it's in nose, which will then um, put back oxygen into the air and everything will level out again. We won't have these natural disasters in extremities as we're having them. But, uh, and so, yeah, there are ways to uh, have farming uh, at, in different manners uh, that's more effective and productive. In fact, I have already figured out that all 7 billion of the human population can fit in the state of Kansas in a, a big, uh, residence. You don't have to have a small Manhattan apartment as another guy had figured out through his calculations. Uh, a, a skyscraper cube uh, covering Manhattan he said also would uh, he said would cover uh, seven billion people on the earth. And so my design I uh, found uh, could cover Kansas. And so using my design Using the whole land mass of the Earth, it's upwards of uh, 16 quadrillion humans are possible to live on the Earth. And you think, well, where do we plant food? Where are animals going to live? <sighs> you ever heard of a thing called roofs? Yes, you can 
plant the gardens on the roof. You can have the safaris and the, all that on the roof, which means you'd have to make the structure strong enough to support uh, the uh, weight. But it can be done more effectively than we are currently doing things. And so you see right now we have farmland, we have manufacturing land, we have residential land, we have corporate land, we have government land. We're not effectively using our land resources. Uh, and so, uh, uh, yeah, I, seeing that we can obtain our products without the need for money. And we don't need to have humans doing this for us. We can devise automated, automatic uh, automation, uh, robotics, technologies, mechanical uh, devices that will do it all for us. Uh, we have the technology. And we don't need to make them so that they break down in a few years in order for people to buy replacements or buy parts. That only happens under a monetized system. Remember the Ford scandal in 1970? My dad does. He replaced the financial advisor for Ford when we moved in uh, 72, somewhere around there, to Michigan after graduating at Berkeley. And uh, and so, yeah, the, the Pinto was the big flop of Ford, where they thought they could try to sneak it out a cheaper, uh, not only in price, but in quality vehicle, uh, for which the poor were the only ones who were going to buy them, but then the poor, in reality, have to pay more because they have to pay for uh, not just the car insurance and the, the emissions tests and, and uh, licensing and the gas fill-ups, which there was the gas crisis back then in the 70s as well. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, when, when you take money away, you can actually design and build products that last forever last a lifetime at least. When I was uh, in high school I watched a lot of TV so I watched a lot of commercials and uh, one set of commercials had to do for light bulbs you know where they have it as seen on TV. Well as seen on TV they had advertised light bulbs that were for life. Lifetime guaranteed life bulb, light bulbs. Guaranteed. And this was before LEDs, and uh, and then didn't hear from them for a while, and uh, sometime after, light bulbs come back, but now they're only guaranteed for ten years. Now were they tricking me before and lying to me that they were guaranteed for life? It hadn't been 10 years, so how would other people know that they're not guaranteed for 10 years? Uh, so something happened. And more likely, they realized that uh, we're not going to make enough, enough money if everybody has our lifetime guaranteed light bulb. Because there's only so much lighting that a house can have. <laughs> and yes, there, it's a quick fix money thing. Uh, and granted, that's often what people do. Uh, when you come up with a new invention, you got to realize that other people will eventually uh, replicate your idea and sell it in competition with yours. And so you need to be able to make as much money as you can, as fast as you can, before others start duplicating it. And uh, uh, so that's understandable also in a monetized system. But, uh, yeah, we don't need to have these problems. With cars, for example, we don't need combustion engines. They're obsolete. They're poor quality 
in comparison with the advancements that we have made in technology. You know, and people are uh, set in their old ways of, oh, I gotta have a muscle car that really revs up and has strength. We have the technology and it doesn't pollute the environment. And that's what people just don't get. You know, the coal, farmer, coal farmers down here in Utah, they were afraid when their coal plant had to shut down because of the mine collapse. And uh, what do we do? We don't know where to go. This is the only business in town. Uh, we're not educated to get other jobs. And yeah, their lives were ruined when the coal mine collapsed. And uh, uh, it doesn't have to be that way. People get set in their boxes and they can't break out of their boxes because the government won't let them. And they're not regulating the economy. We need a new system. And, uh, and so as you can see under my system, we already have every resource necessary. We just have to replace what we take. So if we uh, take uh, plants, we got to replace it with more plants. And so you, it can be done where you segment off the amount that you need, but make sure that you plant the equal amount to replace it. And that will keep the earth happy. It won't panic and freak out. Oh no, we're losing. Uh, we're not able to produce oxygen, too much CO2, and uh, that way we don't kill each other off as we lay extinct uh, species after species. Apparently in Australia, a, a particular species of mouse is now extinct. Uh, hold on a minute while I pause and scrape out my nose so it no longer exists. Okay, hope that's better. All right, so uh, we don't need to pay for things because there's no money. And so what do we do with our time? If robots are doing all our jobs, what do we do? Whatever we want. And that's what people don't get. We don't need money to pay for things. We can have things made, and it doesn't have to be by humans. We can create machines to do it for us so that we can do and be and learn whatever we want. If you want to be a botanist, you can be a botanist. A veterinarian, veterinarian. Medical doctor, medical doctor. We don't need lawyers. <laughs> And we don't need businessmen. Uh, but, uh, you know, other things, science fields. We can do actual studies in science now. We can cure cancer without fear of, hey, I better figure out a way to continue with my grant funding, uh, even though I'm not coming up with a cure for this disease, because once I come up with a cure, I can no longer receive grant funding we won't have those problems anymore. There won't be insecurity, financial insecurity. And so all we need to do is make this change to the new economic system. We don't need to worry about who's gonna pay for it. We don't need to worry about who's going to do the work for it. Because right now, the the work that white people don't want to do is being given to illegal immigrants. And we don't need to worry about that anymore. We can treat everybody as equals. Everybody prospers. You know, we still have to deal with the dumb heads who think that white supremacy is the way to go and we need to exterminate all others. <sighs> Didn't help. Hold on a second. Okay, so now that we have 
the fully automated system set up to make and produce uh, the food, the clothing, all the goods and services we need, furnishings for our homes, etc., communications, devices, whatever, transportation. How do we get it? You have to have distribution centers, uh, a centralized marketplace, so to speak. But it's not communism because communism is dependent on labor. And if you uh, are not able to labor, then you get discriminated against. <laughs> so there's, a, there's drawbacks in communism. But under this, it's a constitutional government. Constitution rules the land, not a party group dictating who gets what and gives more to the group uh, than to the people. And there's no, there is no groups leading the people. It's a constitution that governs and everybody gets the right to life, liberty, property. There is no discrimination. And uh, thus, yeah, there's gonna be no crime. Because why do people commit crimes when they steal? They steal because they want the product because they can't get it by normal means, or at least quick enough. When you're poor, you can't save money. You have to spend the money on things you need to survive. And so having a minimum wage job is not enough. And thus the need to steal. You know, the les miserables. You know, the boy gets arrested because he steals food. And that's the government's fault for setting up the economy as they did, or not regulating it as they should. All right, so, pause again. All right, so all you have to do is have uh, distribution centers for populations of up to a uh, hundred or a thousand, doesn't matter which, uh, and then uh, a ten of uh, either the hundred or the thousand have a, a distribution center there for a higher level and, and so on, ten tens until you cover the whole world. Now what the local distribution center is for is for the needs of those people in that area. And you don't need to worry about people stealing from different centers because everybody gets what they need from their center. There's no need to go to other centers and steal. Everybody gets what they want. There's no need to steal. Uh, and, uh, you know, if people do, then yes, they have to be put through a court process and be punished. But there's no need to steal. And so punishment is legitimate uh, rather than forced uh, to uh, pay people's wages. You know, it's a situation where people are actually doing crimes rather than committing crimes on those who are victims. Um, anyway. Uh, and that's the government part. Uh, and so, uh, for the local distribution center, they have everything that their people want and need on a regular basis. And if the center, the distribution center, doesn't have it, they just get onto the system and go to the next higher up that's over the 10. And say hey we're short on this we need this much it will check its inventory and respond back with we've got it it's coming if they don't have it then they go up one more center center of ten <clears throat> and same situation do they have it Great, we'll send it down. And not only will they send it down, but they will make sure that the, the lower center of 10 
has supply and storage for the next time that they ask so that they won't be short the next time around. Only perishable foods uh, are the exception to this uh, but because uh, you can't have perishable foods stored for a certain period too long. <clears throat> but uh, other other items uh, like uh, sewing machines or uh, chairs you know those types of things you can store uh, if there's a, a need in the area and uh, each center would be uh, not only a distribution center but a storage uh, for the needs so that they don't have to have people come place an order and then wait for the shipment to arrive it'll already be there and so it's just like grocery stores they supposedly do well enough to have a system that identifies which items get sold that they need to then replace before they run out of the whole product uh, but as you see sometimes there's a rush on a certain product and it runs out before they can receive the new shipment uh, so that needs a program to fix that problem and that's easily done I was able to do it in the Beehive warehouse uh, where I was in uh, working uh, so yeah I, I the picking line they would run out of product on their pick line and when they needed items to ship and so they'd call us in the warehouse and say hey we're short on this we don't we're out we need a our supply replenish so I know all that system and how it works and I solved it uh, by the end of the day we already had them fully stocked for the next day that's how good I was with uh, figuring it out uh, so it can be done it can be done more efficiently than it's currently being done um, so like for example if you got a, a Super Bowl foot game, football game coming up you want snack foods in larger supply so it's a simple thing to plan and prepare for you know if it's Valentine's Day you need to stock up on your candy so uh, it's that simple and as as we live in our homes we have access to anything and everything we need and all you have to do is contribute to society and uh, that's the check and balance uh, because yes we can have automation do lots of things but there are some things that automation just can't do and uh, you know like even though uh, we can have robots take care of scientific measurements uh, we still need a human to analyze the, the data uh, but uh, yeah if space travel were really possible we could explore the galaxy uh, not need to worry about uh, survival here on earth but uh, oh man uh, sorry uh, but anything anybody wants to do veterinarian uh, scientist of any field artist we're gonna need people that can do art music movies we'll need people to do those I really am not happy with the avatar computer generated movies uh, if they're cartoon in nature okay but uh, if they're trying to pretend to be human like there's a new one that's out now from the makers of avatar I think I can't remember the name of it uh, but uh, and I see a lot of it with the new movies that come out uh, Justice League for example somebody did a revision of it with all CGI characters and it was weird and freaky 
it did not look real. Uh, and as much as uh, CGI can do great things, such as Star Trek Discovery, I mean, they're doing much better quality work than with the original Star Trek of Captain Kirk. And, uh, uh, but uh, they still use the real actors, real humans, to do the acting. And uh, that's what I like to watch if I'm watching something that I know is not cartoon. If it's cartoon, like The Simpsons, great. Have fun with it. You know, do weird, freaky stuff to it. I already know it's not real people. <laughs> you have real voiceovers, obviously, but uh, I uh, am well aware that it's not real people. And so Avatar, okay, I understood. You were using real people until you put them in those machines, and then they became avatars. So, got it. But uh, this new movie is uh, real people, but they're avatars. And that's, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, another one is Starship Troopers. Uh, the first three movies were human uh, actors. Great. Uh, going up against bugs, which obviously have to be CGI. I understand that. Uh, but uh, then they went and did cartoon stuff. And I'm like, no, no, this ain't working anymore. And so, yeah, as far as I know, they only have three movies. All those other cartoon stuff... They don't exist in my mind. <laughs> it's like uh, Superman Returns. Uh, I love the movie. I liked it, but most people didn't. And so uh, they've redone it so that uh, that never happened. <laughs> you know, I loved it when Lex Luthor uh, wonders who the father of uh, Lois Lane's boy is. And he goes, are you sure? <laughs> uh, too bad that he had to get caught up in a sex scandal. <sighs> oh well. Uh, but, uh, I mean, yeah, we got the Oscars coming this weekend, tomorrow, I guess, isn't it? So, perfectly fine to talk about movies. And so uh, that's how it works. If you want to learn anything, you'll have a computer system to teach you whatever you need to learn, whatever document you need to go to, whatever video you need to watch. And we don't have to have text. We can now have video presentations to teach people, to teach our kids, to teach us as adults, whatever we want to do. And if we want to change what we're doing, if what we're doing we're getting bored with and we want to do something else, we can do it. And even if it's late in your years, you can change to do something else or try something new. Uh, we will have that freedom under that system. And it's all available to us. We don't have to have a, a government controlling our lives. We don't need businesses telling government how to control our lives because there's no money involved and so uh, all you have to do is contribute and so if you like making clothes for example uh, you'll be given a sewing machine that will allow you to make clothes you know yes we'll have automated robots that can make clothes independent of whether or not we have people making clothes uh, because yes what do you do if you have nobody wanting to uh, plant har plant seeds and produce food and and make clothing we don't need to worry about that we've got robot technology to utilize and so if if people all want to gravitate to entertainment that's okay uh, because we have robotic technology. All we need is to make sure that they stay in pristine um, that they're working. 
Uh, and so we'll need people that will know how to fix them if something breaks down after a thousand years. Because <laughs> if you've got everybody who's a thespian, and our lives are all thespian related, uh, what do you do when the robot breaks down and we have no food anymore? <laughs> what do we do? I don't know. Is there is there a book or a video on it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to read. <laughs> so... <laughs> But with the larger populations, you're not going to have everybody liking the same thing. That's a guarantee. Uh, there will be fads that will crop up here and there. But for the most part, there will be people who will gravitate to one field or another. One artistic field or a scientific field. And, uh, and it doesn't matter what people do because there's no money involved. You don't have to worry, be a starving artist anymore. You don't have to be a scientist that knows how to cure cancer but is waiting for grant money. You just go out and do it. We haven't cured AIDS, so I'm going to be the one to cure AIDS. And I'll spend my life researching to find the cure. And there's no worry about whether you're going to get money uh, by not having grant money. You get to do it. Now, nuclear bombs? No, you will not get to do that. We don't need to do that. There are other options that are safer. So, and so we don't need weapons, do we? But, uh, yeah, if there is people who decide that they want to destroy and ruin life for everybody else, then yes, we're going to need a militia. But that involves the government part of this process. So you don't need to worry about it with the economic part. And so uh, that's it. That's utopia. Uh, and uh, since my video audience is Mormon, that's the utopian law of consecration, guys. It's that simple. You know, everybody talks about, oh, well, I'm, the prophet will figure it out. You know, none of you know how to do it. I just demonstrated it can be done and how it can be done. And it's that simple. And so, yes. Whatever you do, if you like to make clothes, the clothes you would make, you keep what you need for yourself or for your family, you give everything else to the distribution center. And it gets processed and they recognize that you did work to contribute to society. Because if you become a bum, where you're just sitting on the couch vegetating, drinking beer or smoking drugs, then you're not productive to society. And you all have to be removed and placed in a, an environment where you can do that for your rest of your life if you don't want to do anything. And I just, I can't understand that kind of thinking process that a person would really waste their life. But yeah, we'd have to have an isolated place to put people, because we don't need jails. Jails don't fix people. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the new kinds of prisons uh, would be more humane. Everything would be done for them, uh, but uh, they wouldn't harm others. Because, uh, yeah, if you waste your life away, you're harming yourself. You're committing suicide. You're shortening your lifespan. And... Uh, uh, we don't want you to die. You can be productive. You can do things. And I have not known a bum who wants to be a bum for just being a bum. Everybody who I've seen who is forced to be a bum because they just 
can't make it in society because of the way the government uh, runs things. They all have dreams. They all want to do things. You know, you know, whether it's, you know, be a musician. They have dreams of being a musician or, or, uh, or, you know, even playing video games. That can be productive because you involve yourself in social interaction with these online games. You're playing against with other people and against other people. And so, yeah, you can have games designed to be educational and yet fun and interactive. And so if people want to spend their life doing that, that's okay too. Because that can be uh, videoed so that other people can benefit from what they're learning from your gameplay. See, these things can work out. You know, people worried about video games rotting the brains of children. No, they don't rot the brains of children. You can design games to be fun, educational, and benefit others as well. It can be done. You know, in movies. If you're not catching on to my videos, all I do is quote movie lines. Movies are my education. And here I am, I've created utopia from all that I've watched in my life. How many other people can say that? So, you know, if you want to devote yourself to being religious, fine, I guess. Uh, but uh, the real religion is being of benefit to your fellow man. And so if you want to lock yourself up in a monastery, okay. Or dedicate your life in a temple, okay. But there's more to life than that. So that's up to you as long as you're contributing in some form or fashion. Uh, do whatever you want. And Earth has the resources. And it's all set up in a distribution center uh, stacking. So, uh, uh, we'll just say 100, uh, although it's probably more like 1,000. So we'll just say 1,000 then. So we have a distribution center for a thousand. That's the local center. Then you have a distribution center of 10,000. 10,000, not 10,000. Well, yeah, it is 10,000. A distribution center over 10,000, which are each of the thousand separate centers. And then 10 of the 10,000s and until the whole world is covered. And uh, the, the big central one is the storage. And if we were to utilize it here just in the United States only, uh, our trade with other countries, we wouldn't really have a trade deal anymore because we're not dealing with money. It's just like, hey, what do you guys want? We have this as extra that we can give you. And whatever they want, we just give it to them. And if they don't want to give to us, okay. <laughs> if you don't want to share your culture with America, okay. We have people from your country here in America. They want their culture and goods from their culture. And, and so, yeah, all, they, all the other countries can give their access. And so it's that simple. And there's no need for money anymore. And uh, yes, it would collapse the economies of the world. <laughs> and so the economies, the other countries would therefore have no choice but to create a new economy themselves. Because uh, by doing this drastic change, it would collapse the rest of the world's economies. And so it, it's not forcing them to do our system. Uh, they would have to come up with their own system. It would be nice if they joined us. 
uh, it would be beneficial for them as well um, but they don't have to we don't need to force people to do our way uh, but uh, that's how easy it is <sighs> so okay we're at an hour uh, do you guys understand the economic system we don't need to worry about who's going to pay for it no money and we don't need to worry about uh, insecurity of food clothing possessions furnishings whatever you know and and you can have the better quality product if you like the sleep number bed rather than a sealy posturepedic bed that's okay you can get whatever you want if you prefer lucky charms you can have lucky charms anything you want I, of course, like Lucky Charms. <laughs> and I, I, I don't... Beds, for me, I really don't have a preference, really. I've not had problems sleeping. Only when it's too hot. But everybody will have central air. You know, none of this air thing at the window. So... Yeah, it's that simple. And we can instantly solve the environmental crisis that nobody else is really going to be fixing. They're just going to be adjusting the finances in the budget. And uh, the real problems has to do with polluting the air and the water and the land. And we can stop that. We don't need to pollute anything anymore. So, like I said, transportation no longer by combustion engine. And, uh, that's okay, guys. You don't need a muscle car. So, all right. That's it. And that's all. And so, yeah, it would be perfect for me because uh, there's not much money in in deciphering the origin of the alphabet or the uh, glyphs from Egyptian <laughs> it's not very profitable and so in my circumstance I would dedicate myself to translations uh, and developing the language and producing lesson manuals and, and research manuals like I've been doing mm -hmm. but for me I like doing other things too I've invented games I've come up with other duck types of books uh, and in manuals and, and uh, yeah I, I do lots of things whatever I get inspired to do I do and I don't let anybody stop me and so uh, yeah I'm not stuck on just one thing I do lots of things and if you can't handle lots of things that's okay the one thing you do do it at your best that's all that's needed and so, yeah, if, if for some reason you can't really make clothes, <laughs> no, don't feel bad if you're not the new fad in fashion design. Because <laughs> we shouldn't have competitions. Uh, that needs to stop. You know, like the Oscars? No. Because uh, it's all rigged. You know, and people have known that. Uh, even Steven Seagal, back when he was an American, uh, he did his first movie, and in that first movie, he talks about how he was going to uh, be uh, uh, ripped off from getting an Oscar nominee, uh, even though it was an excellent movie on his part, exposing the CIA uh, drug uh, trafficking in uh, the wars. Uh, Korean War, was it, or was it the Vietnam War? One of the two. They probably Korean. So, yeah. Alrighty.